Okay, here's a review of homework problems chapter 4, one, number 137 through 140, and then number 142. So, this first problem here, finding the exact value without using a calculator. So, this is one of the basic ideas of using the unit circle to be able to find the cosine of an angle in radians and a sine tangent. So, here we are co with cosine. So, we first need to find that angle on the unit circle. So negative direction, we're moving in the negative. Um, so one, two, three, six, four, five, six. So right here is our triangle in the unit circle. And we're looking for the cosine, so the x value. And right here, the x value is negative square root of 3 over 2. So there's that. And for B, we're looking for tangent of 31 pi over 4. So the first thing we need to do is figure out where 31 pi over 4 is. So every eight group of 8, we go all the way around. So 8, and then 16, and then... Um, so 32 would be here. So just 1 fourth before 32, so I'm thinking right there. Okay, since it's tangent, it's uh, y over x, and in this particular case, at that spot, the, we're at um, square root of 2 over 2, and negative square root of 2 over 2. So whenever you're dividing the same value by itself, it simplifies to a 1, one of them's positive, one of them's negative, so negative 1. So, oh, um. All right, next question. So we're looking for where uh, x is equal to 1. So this first pro one is a little bit tricky because this is the one spot on the unit circle where x is equal to positive 1. And according to the inequality that we see here, um, we're allowed to equal 0 and then go right up to uh, 2 pi, so 0 is the location, so the angle is 0. Now if this had a equals underneath, then we could include 2 pi as well, but it does not. Okay, so moving on to B, um, we're looking for where tangent is equal to negative 1, so Again, whenever tangent is negative 1, that means it's one of the fourths because that's the square root of 2 over 2. Those are the, the place on the unit circle where the x and the y are equivalent to each other, equal magnitudes. So we're looking for where tangent is negative. So the quadrants where tangent is negative and at the fourths. So it is positive here, tangent is negative here and here, so these two are our angles. So that would be 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Okay, C. Where is cosecant equal to 2? So I can reciprocal that. Uh, Reciprocal of cosecant would be sine, and reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. So I'm looking for where sine is positive 1 half, or the y value is positive 1 half. So that would be right here, and that gives us these two spots. So that would be pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6. And our last one here. Again, let's do the reciprocal. So secant reciprocal is cosine. And so that would equal 1 over the square root of 2. After we rationalize that, we find that that is where you're at root 2 over 2. So where is cosine positive root 2 over 2? So I know that it's the fourths, and cosine is positive here and here. So this angle and this angle. So that would be pi over 4 and um, 
seven times over four. All right, next problem. Um, this one, we've got two parts here, so we're trying to uh, verify these trig identities. And remember, verifying means prove that the, the equivalence is true by transforming one side into the other. Um, you can change both sides, and as long as they equal each other in the end, we're good. You just cannot multiply or can't mix up the sides. You have to keep the sides separate. So, best strategy, or my favorite strategy when I'm not sure what to do is to change everything to be in terms of sine and cosine. So this would be 1 over sine minus sine and this one cotangent is cosine over sine multiplied by cosine. Alright, so let's simplify these. On the left side I need to subtract, on the right side I need to multiply. So on the right, I get cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared x, and all of that over sine x, multiply. Um, and then on this side, I need a common denominator of sine, so I need to multiply by sine x over sine x. My common denominator is sine. And got 1 minus sine squared in the numerator. Okay, according to the Pythagorean identity, this, a rearrangement of the fundamental Pythagorean identity, this is equivalent to cosine squared. So now each side is equivalent. And we are all set. Be a little challenging. First thing to do would be to change everything in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to change the secant to cosine, 1 over cosine, and the tangent to sine over cosine. And now I've got a nice common denominator, so I've got 1 plus sine x over cosine x. Alright, so the other side, 1 over 1 over cosine x and minus sine over cosine. Okay, so this is still 1 over and I've got a common denominator so I can combine that. So 1 minus sine x over cosine. Okay, so now I'm going to do the reciprocal here. So I've got cosine over 1 minus sine. And I'm still trying to make these equal each other. So let's see. I cannot use the Pythagorean identity unless I've got a squared, so I'd really like to have something squared. So I am going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom of one of these by cosine, so that I can get a cosine squared. So how about I'm do cosine over cosine? That's the same as multiplying by one, so it's legal. So I get cosine times um, 1 plus sine x all over cosine squared. Now that I have a nice cosine squared, that is when I can actually switch that out and make it uh, 1 minus sine squared. Now this part factors. So we can get 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine 
x and now these divide make one now we've got sine oops I miscopied it over here this is actually supposed to say cosine that's better So that ends up simplifying to match the other side, and it has been verified. All right, moving on to this one. Okay, since these are squared, I want to look straight to my Pythagorean identities. And I can see that 1 plus tangent squared is equal to uh, secant squared. And 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. Okay, so reciprocal of this, reciprocal of secant squared would be cosine squared. Reciprocal of cosecant would be sine squared. And with the Pythagorean identity, we know that this is true, so we're all set. All right, and our last one, find reasonable equations for each of these. Okay, so to me, this one looks like, well, there's two ways I could do this. I could either make this in terms of sine or cosine. So it looks like an upside down V to me. So I'm going to start with doing um, it in terms of cosine. So Y equals A. My amplitude would be, it goes from one, so two, and it's upside down, so negative two cosine. And then I need a B value. Okay, so this stretches from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. So a full period is 4 pi. So the, or the B value must be 1 half. And then my shift, my horizontal shift, it's starting here at negative 2 pi. So I've got a horizontal shift of... Uh, plus 2 pi. And then everything is shifted down. The center line's at negative 1. Another possibility for this same one is if we looked at it like this. It's beginning here and ending here. That would change this equation a little bit as a, a positive amplitude still with the one half but there's no shift anymore so it sort of simplifies the equation for b it's looking to me like a sine curve going down and then back up so i'm seeing a negative sine curve so y is equal to negative and it's got a an amplitude again of two and the period begins and ends from zero to two pi so it looks to me like the period is 2 pi, which makes the B value 1. And there is no shift, and uh, there's no horizontal shift. And then the vertical shift, it's all moved up 1. So that looks pretty reasonable to me. All right, that's it.